So lads, we are actually putting out two videos in three days. It's a little bit of a miracle here. But lads, again, we are doing something a little bit different on this channel. And we are going to be having a look today just at Paul George. Obviously, if you guys haven't been here for the last video, I'm gonna be structuring these videos slightly differently, mainly because the previous style I was making was getting copyright claimed and was taking way, way too long to edit. Wasn't even that the research was taking too long. Like I was able to research on those videos quite easily, but the difference is it was just taking too long to make. So something like this type of structure works really, really well for me anyway. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Paul George and really, the question of like, is Paul George finished? Is he finished as a superstar? Or maybe we've just been kind of wrong all along with Paul George. And what I think the future is for Paul George, and if I think the Los Angeles Clippers should go and trade the guy. Also, if you guys are new to the channel or here from the DBG channel, subscribe to this channel. But anyway, so Paul George, what has happened to him this season? It just seems like he kind of fell apart. What did he average in the playoffs? Not a lot. And it wasn't even that he was averaging a low amount of points. The problem was he went game one against Dallas, 27. Game two, three, and four, 14, 11, nine. Game five, 35 points. Game six, 15. Then you look at the Denver series, games one, two, and three, 19, 22, 32, and then 10, 26, 33, 10. So I don't necessarily think the problem with Paul George in this series or overall was is anything that we haven't seen. It was a huge lack of consistency in his play in the playoffs. And I know that that's something that a lot of people are trying to talk about, like it's this new phenomenon with Paul George, but it's not. I'm gonna say this right now, it's, it's not. And we're gonna have to talk a little bit here about previously in his career. But in my opinion, this is Paul George. The Paul George we're seeing right now is Paul George. So obviously we're gonna have to look back at his time in Indiana. And in his time in Indiana was when he really broke onto the scene. Let's talk about the 2013 playoffs. Because the 2013 playoffs really were where Paul George made a name for himself. And it's where a lot of people really first started to think of Paul George as, you know what, this guy could be a future star. And obviously that whole thing was pre-injury. That was all before injury with Paul George. And since injury, a lot of people are talking, saying he hasn't quite been the same. But again, I'm going to make the argument here that he's always been this type of a player. And that pre-injury, post-injury, he's still the same player. He didn't get any better, he didn't improve post-injury, but he actually didn't regress either, especially looking at his years in OKC where he was an MVP candidate. But if you guys are looking at his playoffs, in 2013, against Atlanta in a six-game series, in game six, the closeout game, Paul George scored four points. Two of 10 shooting in a closeout. This is 2013 Paul George, the great playoff running against Miami Heat. Closeout game, he scores four points. Next round against the Knicks, he doesn't drop below 10. But at the end of the day, he didn't score over 23 points in that series either. 2013 against Miami Heat, his coming out party. Let me go over his points in each of those games. 27, 22, 13, 12, 27, 28, and in game seven, seven. What is that? If you had taken those seven games, that is almost identical to what he did against the Denver Nuggets, except in a different amount of games. I think he was decent in game three, and in this one, he kind of, this series, he was a little bit up short. But three very, or four very good games, and three very bad games. And that's been the story of Paul George's career. I'm just saying. If you guys even look at 2014 against Miami, game two and game three, 14, 17 points. If you guys look at him against Washington in a six game series in Eastern Conference semis, he had an 11 point game, a 12 point game, a 15 point game. Round one against the Atlanta Hawks went to seven games, he had a 12 point game. And this is all pre-injury. So anyone talking about how pre-injury Paul George was some different animal and different beast to what he is now, it's almost identical. We're seeing the same patterns year after year after year. Getting swept by Cleveland Cavaliers in 2017, 15 points in game seven. 2018 playoffs against Utah Jazz, five points in game six, the closeout game. Um, at least against Portland, he has 36 in the closeout game. And Lillard hit what was a bad shot, but it was a bad shot statistically, bad shot for any player, including Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard just hit a crazy shot, fair play. And then obviously it comes to this here. So is this trying to make like a big point in favor of Paul George? Not really, but it's just me talking about how I'm seeing a lot of people saying he's been washed since the injury. 
Paul George has been consistently inconsistent in the playoffs for his entire career. He has been the least consistent playoff performer for the last seven years. And that's kind of where the negatives are going to really stop. Because I think Paul George proved in OKC that he is one of the best defensive wings in the entire NBA. I need, think he needs a right system. I don't think he played the best defense in the playoffs this year, but he still is. I think he still is. While, yeah, he did not have the greatest playoffs defensively, Luka kind of killed him. The problem is, is it's Luka. Like, you can't, one does not simply stop Luka Doncic. You kind of slow him down and force him into difficult shots. And in fairness, the Clippers did it. Luka just hit them. Like, there's nothing really wrong with that. The thing is, Paul George is still an elite, elite level defender. What we know about Paul George, he has never been a big shot maker in his career. And he has never been a leader on his team. And again, we can even judge by what he said in the whole Clippers lineup or in the whole um, Los Angeles Clippers locker room thing. All he said was, we need to regroup, get the same guys, and go back and we can win it next year. If that came out of the word mouth of any other player, it would have been seen as okay, a non-news story. But because it was Paul George after a bad playoff series, everyone is looking at it like he's some scrub, when he's not, in reality. The problem is the Clippers team, the whole, the whole team thought they were stars, basically. They thought they were gonna walk to a championship and doesn't happen in basketball they're all too good for that and at the end of the day could he have done a Kyrie could he have turned around and done a Kyrie Irving and said publicly that we need more pieces could he have done what what a lot of people do and say we just didn't have enough talent no he genuinely they should have won the championship or they should have at least beaten the Denver Nuggets but he said all the right things and he's still getting crucified and a big reason for that is a clear thing he has he has never been the leader he's never been that vocal leader Indiana, did they really have one? They had David West. Um, OKC, he had Russell Westbrook. And that's kind of it. Yeah, he may have been the leader in some of the bad years in Indiana, in like 2017, um, when they lost, got swept by the Cavs, but like, it's not like he's ever really been leader on a good team. But at the end of the day, that is okay. We just need to have a, di I think we just need to have a different outlook on Paul George. We need to have a different outlook. Like, Paul George has been true to form with the Clippers. Great regular season player. Um, he's had quite a poor, and I use the word poor here, and I probably shouldn't. I probably should use the word inconsistent playoffs. Uh, but one thing, that I'm not going to hold it against him this year, and this, the argument has to go both ways. Because a lot of people want to make the argument that the bubble has allowed young players to thrive because there's less pressure, because there's no crowd. However, the opposite is true. Or not the opposite even is true. The bubble can affect people in different ways. And you have to take this into account. You have to take into account. He was open with it. I can guarantee you that so many more NBA players are like this. Is it an excuse for him not playing bad? No, but it's kind of a reason that, in my opinion, we shouldn't put too much weight on what is shown in this bubble. W would Tyler Hero be doing what he was doing if he wasn't bubble? Probably not. Um, would Jamal Murray be doing what he's doing? Probably not. Heck, would Dame Lillard have been doing what he was doing the regular season? Probably not. You meant ridiculous stuff that happens in the bubble. And to be honest, if the referees weren't slowing down the game, the bubble games would all be crazy, crazy speed. And the whole quote about this, it's not that, it says here, shout out to the people that were in his corner. They helped him get him right, get him back in great spirits, can't thank enough, after he had one good game. And people that came out and they were saying, if he actually was struggling, that the, it wasn't one game wouldn't fix it. And it's kind of evident one game didn't fix it. There was something wrong with him. Whatever about the last game, whatever about um, the whole series against Denver where he played a few Riga games, there was something wrong with him in the second half. The whole team choked. They all choked under the pressure. And that is, again, true to form with Paul George's career. He has not been incredible under pressure. But then there's two sides to look at this. There's two ways we can look at Paul George. You can look at it in a way of, this is a guy that should have been a superstar, that isn't. Or we can have to take a step back and rethink about how we look at Paul George. Did the Clippers give up way too much for Paul George? Yes, there is no doubt about that. The Clippers gave up way too much for Paul George, but you can't turn back time. You can't turn back time 
and get Shea Gilders Alexander, bring him back in the door. Bring Danilo Gar- Gallinari back in the door. Bring in their five first round picks. The Clippers mortgage their future for Paul George. However, it may not be the wrong decision at the end of the day. In my opinion, Paul George is still that exact same player as he was in Indiana. He's still that exact same MVP candidate as he was in Oklahoma City Thunder. The difference is, is that Paul George is not a first option on a team, nor is he a leader on a team that wants to win a championship. Paul George is the perfect secondary piece. The problem is, again, Kawhi Leonard's not a leader leader either. The At Clippers team did not have leaders. They had um, Marcus Morris and Pat Beverly, who, as much as, in fairness, I love Pat Bev, they are like pests. Their job is to make the other team, make it difficult for the other team to play basketball. Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell are there to come in against second unit lineups and dominate. Put the ball in the basket. Neither of them are great defenders. Neither of them are leaders of a team. That Clippers team, they didn't have any leader. They um, participated in low management, which I think is an absolute like joke. I don't think, well, I think a little bit of load management, if someone happens to be tired, like tactical load management saying before the season you're going to load manage is just absolutely ridiculous. And that's kind of what the Clippers ended up doing. So I honestly think that rather than tearing down the Clippers, Paul George has no trade value right now. And also, if the Clippers are shopping Paul George, man, any contending team who has a superstar should go get this guy. If they can get him on the cheap, that is. Because if you have a team with a good culture, a team with a leader, um, and even with the coach, Doc Rivers, no accountability towards Paul George. And that doesn't work either. If you need Paul George to be a 22 point per game scorer, guard the other team's ball handler, and not have to worry about taking the big shot and being the clear number two option, this is a guy that can be part of a championship team. Problem is, is that the Los Angeles Clippers, the way they're structured right now is not that. You've got role guy, role players who think they're better than Paul George. You've probably got Patrick Beverly who thinks he's better than Paul George. You've probably got Trez thinking he's better than Paul George despite barely being able to hit a free throw. The thing is, is that Paul George had a bad series. Yes, he did. But let's not be a prisoner of the moment because this happens every single year when Paul George is in the playoffs. We are a prisoner of the moment. We're a prisoner of what happened in his last game, what happened in his last two games. And it's clear that we have to have a different outlook on who he is. We have to have a different outlook on Paul George because as much as people like to say, he's not the same guy as was Indiana. He clearly is that same guy. But that guy is a lot different than what we remember. We look back on the big moments against Miami. We look back on some of his great playoff moments. And in five years time, we will look back on his playoffs this year and look back at some of the great playoff games he had. And that's the problem. As basketball, not even basketball fans, the basketball community, we glorify things in the past too much, while at the same time doing whatever we can to make the present seem like it's as negative as possible. In reality, Paul George is still that same player. And I I hope, I hope that the Clippers do not panic trade him. Actually, you know what? He needs he needs to be out of there. He needs to be away from Doc. He needs to be away from someone, a, a leader like Kawhi Leonard. Um, he needs to be, I would love it if a team got Paul George in the cheap. But the thing is, we're looking at Paul George the wrong way. He's not finished. Paul George can still be a number two option on the team. He can still be an all defensive first team player. But look, but anyone who looks at Paul George as a future superstar or a current superstar, he's just not it. A top 10 player in the NBA, no. However, could he be the best number two option in the NBA? And is he the best number two option in the NBA right now? I wouldn't say yes because Anthony Davis is a real thing or LeBron is a real thing. It's a legitimate art. They're one A and one B with the Lakers. But he does have that potential. If he's in the right team, the right culture, and I just don't think the Clippers is that culture. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.